السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله الذي يسرى السلام رسول الله محمد وآل آله وصحبه وسلم my brothers and sisters and also my federal federal citizens we're living in a situation that we we need to get a grip on what's going on around us and in the in the means of understanding the nature of our survival individually and collectively collectively and as a nation and also as a world citizen. The situation that's happening now is the behavior of the people have gone really, really out of control. The decadence, the licentious behavior, the immorality, uh, and the degenerate the degenerate behavior is really at an, an alarming uh, level, in an alarming state to such an extent that it, it, it's it's question on how 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 long we're gonna survive as a as a nation and how long this world is gonna be. We already been and, and those people who have um, uh, who are involved or people of scripture, whether you're Muslim, Christian, or Jew, understand there's a time in which this world will no longer exist. It will cease to exist by the Creator, by by the Creator, the Almighty God, the Creator, one God. However. The point is, is that the witnessing of the behavior of the people has gotten to a level, and a really a crisis level. And that crisis, the crisis level, is, is at a point where it is has filtered down to the generations that's coming up after us, and that means within the children. When your children, when your children are plagued with uh, the type of behavior that that is that horde and and that that is despised naturally, then you know the future is very blank. It's it, the, the the future is not bright at all because this is the generation that's coming up after us. And I'm saying that we have as 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 adults and as elders we have set the precedent in this society. And, and where our children are feeding off, we have we, we're not setting the right example, and we're and we're subjecting our children and the generations that's coming up to such immoral behavior. We're not even putting it in check, and the reason for that is that we have taken on the guise of this immoral behavior, and taking on the guise of immoral behavior means that we have sanctioned the type of behavior that we see exhibited and display in the society today. And that's alarming, because if you are people of Scripture, you'll know that this is one one of the major displeasures of the Creator, the Almighty. We as Muslims, we call Him Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You know, glory be to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And when we look at the situation, that we are responsible. The Prophet of Islam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that Qurtu Raid, that we are all shepherds. The the the, uh, the men and the women are shepherds of their family, and we and the and the, and the key issue here is you're responsible on how you govern and how you bring up your children and the people in your care and under your control, and if you are not trying to implant within your children. Righteous behavior, righteous guidance, and the fear of God, and the worship and the obedience of His laws, then you become responsible on how they turn out, and you take on their sins. And what happens is that the children are affected by the sins of the fathers, and that's where this world will be turned upside down, because then there's no means in which they are able to govern themselves. And what happens is the young people become the thieves, the thieves and the murderers and the rapists and all type of decadent behavior that we're affected by. Why? Because we did not keep the society in which we live in. We did not keep it the way the Creator has intended it for, with mercy, with justice, with truth and obedience to 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 Allah to the Creator, and we did not create a wholesome society where people live in a modest and moral uh, um, 
in a, in a modest and moral society. And now we have things out of control. I've seen things last night that really shocked me. You know, I've seen things where children, women, you know, girls and boys and so forth, are imitating, you know, sexual behavior right out there in the open. Uh, women, uh, girls are now imitating uh, the fact that they want to be boys, men want to be girls, and so forth. So, uh, regardless of what you say, this is not an imposition on anybody. <clears throat> this is not a racist or prejudiced position. I, as a Muslim, believe in the scriptures. I believe in the revealed scriptures. And I'm saying that uh, Allah has not changed his way, his thinking, his will. His will and his way remains the same all the way up until the day of judgment and beyond that. And he has made certain behavior. He has made certain behavior be hit prohibited. And he has forbidden it, and he hasn't changed that. And that's what we need to adhere to. That's what we need to come to grips with, because this place is out of control. And we're being affected by it. Families are being affected by it. Your children are going out there, and they're doing things uh, that's affecting the household. You know, if, you're, if, you're, if your child gets arrested, or if he commits any kind of crime, he's into criminality, it's going to affect the whole household. And I'm saying that we need as parents and we need to, as adults and elders, we need to try to keep this thing in check. We have to interact with the society the way it, the, the way it should be interacted with in a manner that we should be commanding good and forbidding evil. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet of Islam said, When you see an evil that you should you if you if you have the power you should stop it with your hands now the the hands it's a means not only a means of uh grasping and gripping but it's also it's also an indication of control the hands are the means to control situations you know when you use your hands you 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 use your hands to manipulate whatever object you come in contact with so the hands <clears throat> signifies taking control of the evil that seems to be promulgating in in the society, and we and we need to do that. But it says, you know, if you don't have the power to, then means you know, means then speak out against it, and that means that if you see an evil. If you see things that's done in your presence, that, that if you can't control it and you can't stop it within that control, then you should say something about it. We've become, as a, as a people, we become desensitized. And it's desensitized to the point we can see all the kind of moral behavior and decadence and all the I mean, crime and all kind of things be, being done in front of us. And we have no means in which it's disgusted us as much. Well. We got used to it. It maybe at one point used to disgust us, and we were, you know, it, despi we, it despised, you know, it was despised, and, and we felt, you know, uh, a disdain about this behavior, but now it's not happening anymore. We got used to it. We, we, we like, turn a blind eye and an ear to the situation, and we, it's a, and, and in some form, it's acceptable. That's never supposed to be the case when it comes to, you know, unrighteous behavior. We always have to adhort it, and we always have to say something if we can't control it or stop it. We always have to speak out against it, you know. And then the Prophet ﷺ says, if that's not the case, فَلَمْ يَسَتَى فَالْبِغَيْبِهِ then, then you should pray for it, for the betterment of it. And you should wish it, wish it to go away in your hearts. And other, other, other for imam means it is the lowest form of imam of faith. But the point is, is that we need to get involved. The world, you know, uh, in this instance, the, we are taking on the guise of all nations before us. And we have an example of how the Creator, Allah the Almighty, dealt with, dealt with behavior before us. 
and that behavior in the form of Noah or Noah alayhi salam, you know, his people, Allah put the flood, brought the flood upon the people and wiped the whole nation out in the world in that instance. And then Lut and then the people of Ad and the people of Tamud and all the nations and the people of Lut or Lot and, the, and we can go on and we have prime examples. It appears that in this generation, <clears throat> in this period of time, we have taken on the guise of all those nations that were destroyed be be because of their unrighteous behavior. We have, it seems like we have taken on all the behaviors of these nations uh, before us. And the, the prophecies from all the prophets, and particularly the prophet of Islam, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, had said the last punishment where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has given man the ample opportunity to, to get himself together and to create a world in which he is pleased with. But if the opposite is, is the case, then it's a world that he is extremely displeased ple pleased with. And that's why Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says he gives you a taste of the day of judgment. And that's why we have floods going on all around the world, in Georgia and in Florida and, and all these other areas and, 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 and Baltimore and, and where there's extreme floods in Louisiana, where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has wiped out a whole place, even after Katrina and these point. Um, and I, they say Katrina, I really don't like to name storms by human names. Uh, I like to indicate that these these are the this is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is the way he, this is his decree in which he has ordained these these things to happen. Is it, 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 when we when we see uh storms and hurricanes and things of that nature, we should that should remind that these are signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're not they're not to be uh they're not to be identified as some human uh, factor uh, by by placing human names on it. We should say the Almighty has brought this into existence. The Almighty has 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 uh, has brought this upon us in in the form of, of of floods and fires and so so we so you go you know Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala gave us a taste of all those nations that He destroyed. He's destroyed Noah with flood. He destroyed the odd people with the wind. And he's destroyed the Thamud people with with um, earthquakes and, and, and the Midian people and you know about Musa and, and Lut he destroyed lots of people you know with brimstones coming from heaven and so forth so we, we get a taste of all those particular types of punishments and there's a lot of time he says he's giving it a taste now we're coming we're in the period of time because the last messenger of Allah the last prophet of God has come and he had mentioned that his coming the prophet of Islam, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that he is the last and the seal of all prophets to come before him. He's he comes from a line of prophets. He's part of the brotherhood of prophets, you know, from 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 Adam, from Noah, from Ab Abraham or Abraham alayhi salam to Moses to Isa to Jesus, all the way up until this point. And he said his his coming. This is the last chance for mankind. And he said his coming, and he put his two fingers together. It's like this: the two fingers like this, like this. The two fingers. His coming in the last days is like this. He said, "This is the this is the illustration that we get from the book, you know, from his from his writings, from his saying." And he said, "The last days and his coming is like this." So that means that after he completes his mission, the last days can come at him at any moment, at any time, and and the signs of a have been upon us. And so, the point is, and my last point is, that can you can you retain? Can you digest? Can you can you filter and can you sort it in your mind that because of mankind and their behavior and Allah being so displeased with it to the extent and the evil and the sins that the man, mankind is going to commit that he would be so displeased with it to the point that enough is enough because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is patient cannot you can't like uh, um, you can't like exhaust the patience of Allah Allah has been, been patient since he's created man mankind and women and and since he created this earth and nations and the hundreds and millions of nations that's gone before us he's been patient with us but he was patient with Noah's people until the extent in which he wiped them out he was patient with the Ad and Thamud and Midian people until he wiped them out he was patient with the people of Lut a lot until he wiped them out, he was patient with the with the with the people of Musa or Moses until he wiped them out. So there's a point 
who are lost patience. There's an extent to his patience. His patience is not exhausted where he ran out of patience. His patience is not exhausted where, you know, he just, you know, he just threw his hands up over the Bilal in a in symbolic manner or that he just had enough. No, he is, he, his patience is appointed, is, a, uh, is according to his decree. He's decree. Every nation has a term. Every nation has a term. And when that term is up, when, when it's like, it's like, uh, in a form of taking inventory, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gives you amount of time. He he gives he doesn't no, no nation lives forever. You know you can you can understand that no nation lives forever. You got the Egyptian nation that then you know they were once a, a great empire. They're no longer in existence. You have the Roman Empire. They, you know all you see is remnants of those empires. They had the Greek Empire. You had the Persian Empire. You had all these empires that exist uh, uh, before us. And they're no longer in existence because of the way they behave. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has destroyed them. So no nation lives forever. And the point is, the world does not live forever in that sense. And it has a term. And that term is according to the behavior of mankind. And because it's been prophesied by all the prophets before the, the prophet of Islam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and it was distinctly and detailed Prophecy was detailed by the Prophet Sallallahu to this extent that he said that the last punishment of all the punishments that's gone before us, the last punishment of mankind would be the end of all this, the end of the world. Can you imagine? That's what we need to that we need to reflect of that. That because man's because of man's kind unrighteous behavior to that extent where Allah will say the world will end because no no longer is it feasible for man to exist. And that's because the the man has reached the point of no return. And when and in the Quran it says and the man mankind has exceeded all the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where there's no return. No matter how much time how much you warn him, no matter how many signs that Allah subhanahu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends upon man as clear as day. Uh, the people of Israel, the children of Israel, Ben Israel, they had all the signs that one can imagine from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they were under the bondage and, and, and subjected, uh, subjected to Pharaoh in Egypt. And, they, and Allah sent all nine signs to them and they still disobeyed him. They still rebelled against the lost amount of time. So it doesn't matter how many signs. So this is we're coming to an extent where a lost amount of time will send all the signs as he is sending right now. There's not a time when you don't see the sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It, whether it's in yourself or outside yourself or whatever circumstances that you go through, whatever experience that you have, you, there is a point, there's a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in those, all those circumstances. And there's a sign of Allah outside yourself where you can see things are happening around you and so forth. <clears throat> and it requires... Allah subhanahu wa says he sends these signs, he sends these catastrophes and these calamities and these afflictions not to destroy you, but to re admonish you so that you can turn to him. So you can turn to Allah and so that you can give up all those things that causes these type of destruction. But you choose not to. After Allah settles the storm, and you call on him with lengthy, Allah says, he, you call on him with such lengthy and, and earnest and sincere effort and calling on Allah to, to relieve you from the situation. And then when he relieves you from the situation, you re, you resort back to the same behavior that caused you to get to the, into the situation in the first place. So there's no there's there, there's there's no getting to you, so to say. There's there, there, there's there's no penetrating the ignorance and the block that you have put on in respect to Allah. The blindness that that has become cover over your your eyes and the deafness that have come into your ears and so forth. You're deaf. You're dumb and you're blind, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. So there's a point where we have we have exceeded the limits, and there will be a point, inshallah, that we have exceeded the limit to the point of no return when it doesn't matter what Allah does in respect to 
and respect of exhibiting his powers and his signs and, and also to give you to admonish you to give you an indication that you should give up all these ungodly behaviors and ungodly laws and that you should follow the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you should for for right in link uh right in uh right in step and link step with the practice and worship of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophets before you and you refuse to do so to that extent where the the last resort is the end of the world, the last day, the Omokayama, the days of standing. And that's and the and 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 uh, uh and us and uh, and and asa'a, you know, the hour. The hour will come upon us. So we need to take heed. We need to take heed. If we can change our behavior, we can, we can, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says that in respect to changing your behavior, you can, you can change in making, in making supplication and dua, you can change uh, what's been decreed against you. You can change destructive decree if you change your behavior. And if you call on Allah and you submit, you can change the decree or you can at least delay it. In, in that respect, because it's already foretold that the end of the world has to come, and it will be fulfilled and manifest. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he established, he established everything by his word. He brought all this thing, all this world, and everything in, everything encased in it. He brought it by, by his word, by the command. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't need hands and so forth to build anything. He said he did it by his word, and that should indicate the awesomeness and the powerful of our Lord, the magnificence, and we should bow down, we should fall down, and fall down with humility when we understand this, that Allah brought everything, not by having to come down, do anything, and fix and stuff, he, just by his command alone, kum fayakum, he said, be, and it became, inshallah. So inshallah, um, this is a live uh, broadcast that I, Figured, you know, it's a first, it's a, it's a based on one man's feelings and and, and one man's reflection, inshallah. And uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from ourselves. Uh, as I say, as the people said when Musa told the people to be patient, to trust in Allah, to call on Allah, and they said, and he says, the people said then, after that they responded to Musa and said, we trust in Allah. And then they made a dua, you know, oh my Lord, save us, you know, from the fitna of the disbelievers and save us <clears throat> from the chastisement and, the, and, and save us and deliver us from the unjust people. Inshallah. So I say the same thing as the as the as the people said before us, as the righteous people say before us. Amin. Subhanakallah humu wa bihamdi. Nashadu wa la ilahi la ant. Nastafurukum wa tu bilay. La hawla wa la quwwata la bilay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah.